Welcome back. Today we are replacing spindle bushings on a Toyota 4Runner. This will be the same on the Toyota pickups. And we are going to be installing the newer updated spindle bearings instead of the bushings. So pop this dust cap off after you've lifted the vehicle and secured it and removed the wheel. And then we can remove the drive plate off of this axle. Now some vehicles will have lockout hubs here but most of the 89 and newer vehicles have this drive plate instead because they have automatic locking differentials. So what I do is I just loosen all these up and I'm gonna show you two ways of getting these off and that's because if you have locking hubs, you're gonna to have to use the first way. If you have the drive plates, you can use the second way or the first way, but the second way is a little easier. After you've loosened up all of the nuts, just go ahead and smack the side of that drive plate with a hammer and it'll pop the tapered washer out of the drive plate. Now you have to smack it a few times and then you can take the nut, the washer, and that tapered sleeve out. And this is what that looks like. If you have the lockout hubs, this is how you'll have to do it. If you have the drive plate, instead you can use two 8 by 125 millimeter bolts and thread them into the blank holes on the drive plate. Then go ahead and tighten those up evenly a little bit at a time. Once you have a couple millimeter gap, you can loosen the bolts back up and those tapered bushings will release themselves from the drive plate. Go ahead and take all the nuts and washers off. Put those all in a safe place. If you try to do this without leaving the nuts on there, it's possible that those tapered washers will fly out of there and you may end up losing them. Once all of the nuts and washers are removed, we can remove that drive plate, but there is a gasket behind it. So remove it carefully. And if the gasket gets stuck on one surface or the other, go ahead and use a pick or a screwdriver to break it loose so you don't tear it. The reason I'm replacing these spindle bushings is for a noise when it's cold outside. That's the most common problem we have is when it's below freezing out, that grease gets really thick and if the spindle bushing is worn, it'll cause a weird chirping or growling noise. And it's also possible to get a slight rattle from the axle bouncing up and down if you have lockout hubs. Once you get this drive plate off, we're going to have to unbolt a few more things. So I'm going to leave the axle snap ring on until we get to that later. These are 19 millimeter bolts. They hold the steering knuckle arm onto the knuckle. And there are two of these, and they also hold the bracket that holds the brake line and the ABS sensor wire if you have ABS on your vehicle. So we're gonna remove both of these bolts so we can reposition the steering arm out of the way. Once we get that out of the way, we can undo the bolt that retains the ABS sensor. This is a 10 millimeter head, and hopefully your ABS sensor isn't rusted into the knuckle. If it is, you may have to take the harness loose up at the inner fender. Next, we need to take the brake caliper loose. If you choose to remove the brake line, you will have to bleed the brakes afterwards. But since I unbolted that bracket first, we have the flexibility to remove the caliper and position it off to the side without damaging that steel line. These two bolts are a 17 millimeter head and they can be quite tight, especially if someone has used Loctite on them in the past. And since we don't want to hang this down on the brake hose or the steel line, I'm going to stick this flexible hanger in there and hang it up on the control arm. Now we can remove the cotter pin from the upper ball joint. And I remove this nut with a 22 millimeter wrench. These are aftermarket ball joints, so I'm not quite sure if the factory one is that same size. And this is a ball joint or tie rod separator. I'll just slide that in there and then tighten it down with my impact and it'll separate that ball joint without damaging the boot. 
If you use a pickle fork, you can damage the boot and you may have to replace it or replace the ball joint. Now the lower ball joint has four bolts that attach it to the knuckle. So I'm gonna remove those instead of removing the lower ball joint from the lower control arm. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the snap ring from the axle. Once the snap ring's off, there is a thin washer behind the snap ring that we also need to remove. If it doesn't wanna come off, you may have to twist it because it does have splines built into it. Next, we need to remove the shock. Now this shock was under load, so I had to loosen up this top nut before I had enough play to get that bolt out of the bottom. I then use my hammer to tap that lower bolt out. And then I also had to grab a punch to push it out the rest of the way. Once we have the shock unhooked from this lower control arm, we can use a pry bar to pry down on the lower control arm to separate the ball joints. Now I tried to remove the lower ball joint first and it got kind of bound up but the best way to do it would be to pry down on the control arm and separate the upper ball joint, which I'm doing right now. Once the upper ball joint is separated, you can kind of tilt the whole thing back and slide it off the axle shaft. Now that we have the knuckle off, we can try to remove that spindle bushing with a slide hammer, and this is a blind hole puller that grabs onto the inside of that spindle bushing. This one ended up being too tight for me to hammer out this way, so I actually grabbed my air hammer and just kind of hit it at an angle until it started to spin. And then I reinserted that blind hole puller on the slide hammer and it came out after a few more hits. I believe this tool was from OTC. I'll put a link down in the description for this and all of the parts that I'm using for this swap. And remember, if you find any of these videos helpful, then please subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. Now that we have the old bushing out, here is the difference between the old bushing and the new bushing and bearing. You can see that that bushing is a little smaller and the inner part is made up of a needle bearing instead. So we'll have to drive that needle bearing into the knuckle first and I'm just gonna use a bearing and race driver set to drive that in. Once I get that driven in flat with the knuckle surface, then I'm going to use a smaller size, flip it around and drive it in a little bit further so I can get that bushing started. When we drive the bushing in, you're going to want to use a large flat object on top of it because if you hit it off to the side, you can crack or damage that bushing. Now this was a kit that I got from Toyota that came with the bushing and the bearing and it also came with a tube of grease and they call it chassis grease. I'll put a link to that down below as well. But it looks like white lithium grease to me. So I went ahead and lubed up that bearing and bushing and I also put a little bit on the axle shaft for reassembly. Once that's all lubed up, we can go ahead and reinstall the knuckle on the vehicle. Just go ahead and set it on the lower ball joint, grab your pry bar, pry down on the control arm, and then reposition it up on the upper ball joint. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.